Hi everyone and welcome to this video podcast. We have an exciting topic that we're going to be covering today on rehabilitative ultrasound imaging, something brand new to the state of Montana for physical therapists and to Missoula. And to help introduce this device and, and the, the things that we're able to do with the, the, the unit, I'm going to have with me today Angela Vapp and Tara Munn, both of whom are doctors of physical therapy who uh, are at our North Clinic on Stockyard Road behind Johnny Carinos. And so what we're gonna to do today is basically give people an understanding of what this is. I've kind of given the name of it. RUSI is the um, short version of Rehabilitative Ultrasound Imaging. So where did this thing come from? What are we doing with it at Alpine? Yeah, so this is our real-time ultrasound unit. And um, basically, it allows us to visualize muscles in action. So. We can use this for patients to um, determine how their muscles are firing, if they're firing correctly, or if they need um, some cueing to improve their muscle performance and the way that they feel and the way they function. So people that come to Alpine, they, they maybe they're wondering about how their back's working or not working, or mm -hmm. shoulder or hip. Mm -hmm. You guys are able to use this and, and see what those muscles are doing or potentially not doing. Um, are you guys seeing some results with what you're doing with folks? Yeah, definitely. Um, right now we're using it primarily to visualize the pelvic floor muscles, the transverse abdominis, which is a deep abdominal muscle, and the multifidus, which is a deep back muscle. And those three muscles make up what we call the inner core and play a large role in, in um, women's health, and when I say women's health, a lot of times we're talking about pelvic pain issues or bladder control issues that affect women and men, actually. Mm -hmm. um, also back pain and pelvic and hip pain. We just recently started using it to uh, visualize muscles around the hip that um, often are impaired or not working correctly in people that are having problems uh, such as hip impingement, hip osteoarthritis, uh, IT band issues, uh, any, any, any functional problem going on in the hip related or that might be giving them pain either in the knee, hip, back, pelvis, that whole area. So what I'm gathering is that by using this unit you can look at these muscles, get an idea of what's going on, what may be working, what's not, and then somehow through rehabilitation then help this person with a hip problem or back problem overcome that situation? Yeah, we're, um, people learn all different ways, right? So this gives people who are visual learners real-time information about what their body is doing or not doing. Um, I wouldn't say people necessarily are frequently able to fix it immediately at the point of, you know, the first ultrasound, but they can see what they're doing and it gives them a more, better understanding of what they need to be doing or what they're not doing well. And then we give them some exercises to go home and work on. And then when we repeat that ultrasound and see how they were able to make a change, that's when they get the feedback of, yes, I, I did practice that right. I did make a change. This is helping me. So I think when, when people think about the word ultrasound and physical therapy together, they're oftentimes referring back to some therapeutic use of, of ultrasound for heating tissue or for you know establishing some healing. Can you guys briefly describe the difference between this kind of ultrasound and what's been traditionally held as ultrasound and physical therapy? Mm -hmm. Traditionally, therapeutic ultrasound, just like you already said, is used for heating tissue or improving circulation to get rid of inflammation and pain relief. Um, there's no picture associated with it. We're not looking at things. We're using uh, a lot different settings and frequencies to go only into the tissue a little bit. This ultrasound unit is a um, is the type of ultrasound unit that you may have seen used in an OBGN's office or an orthopedic physician's office to look at um, tissue or, or your uterus with a baby in it. Now, we aren't using it to look at things other than muscle function, but basically we get an image of the tissue and then we can orient the person to what that image looks like when they do a correct muscle contraction 
versus an incorrect muscle contraction. We can also look at contouring in the tissue to see if there might be a spasm being held in that tissue and then teach them some relaxation techniques or it might help us decide to do some other interventions to help with muscle spasm. So we're, we're using it only for muscle function assessment and training, but the image is the big difference. We get to look at it, they get to look at it, we get to know if they're doing it correctly, and if not, we get to play until we figure out uh, how to help them do it correctly. There's been a lot of talk about the use of the pelvic and low back and abdominal muscles over the years to help people, and, and here I'm speaking primarily of people with back pain, low mm -hmm. back pain, um, and we see a lot of people with tough low back conditions at Alpine. And I remember looking at research back in the like early 90s that's kind of hinting at what we're doing, and here we are in 2013, and having just gotten our unit and you know, beginning to use it, are we behind the curve having not had this before and, and is this going to set us apart for where we're going? No, we are. We're on top of the curve <laughs> and it's so fun to be a part of Alpine Physical Therapy because we always are trying to stay right on top of the curve and we're the first clinic in Missoula and I think Montana, but I can't guarantee that, that actually um, offer real-time ultrasound or RUSI, Rehabilitative Ultrasound Imaging, to the population to help train these, these muscles. So uh, we're keeping Montana on top of the curve here. I like it. We're gonna take a little break right now. We're gonna come back and do basic interviews looking both at um, general orthopedic use of RUSI as well as um, some of the things that uh, Tara would be working with in the women's health arena. Stay tuned. Technology is not our enemy. It is a tool. When placed in the right hands, it can do amazing things. Innovations in medicine, along with well-established techniques, make for amazing results. That is why I established a team that utilizes the latest in physical therapy technology. Purchase of Interest, sponsored locally by Alpine Physical Therapy. We're back with Tara Munn. She's going to be describing the use of uh, RUSI, Re Rehabilitative Ultrasound Imaging, uh, with a large portion of her patient population, which is the women's health arena. Tara, just go ahead and maybe walk us through what you're doing. Yeah, so I'm going to take a, a look at Angela's bladder to get an assessment of her pelvic floor muscle function. Um, before Angela came in today, she avoided going to the bathroom for an hour before, and she tried to drink one to two glasses during that time, which um, is necessary for me to be able to see the bladder. If you don't have enough um, fluid in the bladder, you won't be able to see anything. So. Um, that's the bladder filling protocol that we're asking patients to follow. So I'm going to place the ultrasound on her lower abdomen and wake up my screen here. And right away I can see her bladder so I know that she has enough fluid in there. Just make a couple adjustments here. So when, when imaging the bladder, um, I'm using that for pelvic floor a muscle assessment, as I said, and how I'm doing that is I'm looking for a lift of the base of her bladder when she does a correct pelvic floor muscle contraction. Um, that's one of the key components for a, a correct pelvic floor muscle contraction. Those muscles support and um, lift the bladder, keep the pelvic organs in place. So while Angela's watching the screen so she can see what happens, I'm going to ask her to lift and squeeze her pelvic floor muscles while continuing to breathe normally and she gets a nice lift of the bladder base there. So that's beautiful. Go ahead and relax. So that is the voluntary function of her pelvic floor muscles. We can also use this to assess her automatic function of the muscles. So for example, is she able to maintain a pelvic floor contraction or does her pelvic floor muscles lift automatically when she coughs? So go ahead and give me a little cough, Angela. <coughs> okay. And, and we see a slight depression of the bladder, which um, is normal, but nothing excessive. Now, uh, go ahead and try it again for me and lift your muscles first and then try to cough. <coughs> Good. 
And that's one of the key things that I'm um, advocating patients to incorporate into um, daily life when they have issues with leaking during coughing or sneezing. Um, I can also get a little bit of information about just the um, the tone of her pelvic floor, her obturator internus muscle specifically, which is one of the deep rotators of the hip. It's a muscle that's commonly, commonly implicated in patients with pelvic pain. Um, so if she goes ahead and straightens out her legs, then I'm just looking at the borders of the bladder to make sure the obturator internus, which would be on the sides here, are not denting in the bladder, and it looks pretty good. And then if she goes and rotates her toes out and then rotates them in, I'm looking for a contraction, very good, of um, her obturator internus, which is going to thicken the muscle as she rotates out, and a relaxation, which is going to let the bladder base drop a little bit when she rotates back in. So, yeah. Angela, what you're looking at now looks like some low back tissue. Can you tell us specifically what you're trying to find and do? Yeah, so on Tara, what we're looking at now is her multifidus. And the screen, the, the way that I'm looking at it is um, so I can see both sides, and we call this the butterfly uh, look because you can, the multifidus actually makes a little butterfly uh, formation here. And so I can tell that this is going to be the left side and this is going to be the right side. And then this dark black line here, that's the spinous process. And what we want to see when I asked Tara to contract her multifidus is what happens on both sides. So go ahead and contract your multifidus, Tara, and then relax. And she, she told us she can't do this, but actually <laughs> there was a little bit of contraction on both sides. And do you see the contraction looks different for multifidus than it did when we were visualizing the transverse abdominis. We're not getting a slide, we're getting, it looks like a little tension in the fibers like this. Mm -hmm. Can you that. both see those happen? Now, if I wanted to look at just the symmetry of it, go ahead, Tara, and do it again. And then relax, and again. And relax, she's getting better. You'll notice she's getting a better and more symmetrical contraction with every repetition. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna uh, pause this just for a second. If Tara was having more struggle like she told us she was going to. There are things that I can often do besides just giving her different cues and how to contract the muscle that will help her uh, fire. And one of those things is often I can have them put, um, put their pelvis in a little bit of rotation. So I can just rotate her just ever so slightly one way or the other and then come right back to it. And let's see how you're contracting now. And then relax, and again. And so Tara continues to get a good symmetrical contraction on both sides in this position. If she, if she did it well in this position and not neutral, I could slowly have her practice it, get the feel of what that proper contraction is, and then slowly move her back to neutral. Now, just like in the pelvic floor and transverse abdominis, uh, we can look at automatic contraction. So Tara, go ahead and just bend one knee and then relax. And now bend the other knee and relax. So here we actually see a little asymmetry. Bend your right knee and then relax. And now bend your left knee and relax. So interestingly enough, when she bends her left knee, we get a contraction in both sides, but when she bends her right, it's more unilateral. And so now, Tara, I want you to um, preset yourself with a contraction, multifidus contraction first, and then bend the knee, and then relax. Is that your right one? Mm -hmm. And then same thing for the left, preset, and then bend that knee, and then go ahead and relax. So we use similar pro teaching protocols when we're seeing a dysfunction in the muscle and we look at automatic, we look at active contraction, mm -hmm. um, and we want them both to be good. Sometimes people will have, uh, able, they're able to do it automatically but not uh, voluntarily um, and vice versa. And so then you kind of just train and go through a protocol based on what you're finding. Mm-hmm. So and, uh, 
this is just the starting point. This just helps train that initial contraction and then we start to apply it to a lot of different positions and activities so that you're using the muscles like they should be used in real life. In, in the real McCoy, mm -hmm. perfect. Thank you for joining us in this uh, informative topic on rehabilitative ultrasound imaging and its use in physical therapy practice and particularly here at Alpine Physical Therapy. For more information, you can call our North Clinic and speak with either Angela or Tara at 541-2606 and be sure to visit our website alpineptmissoula.com and click on therapies as we'll have a, a web page available to you on this topic. Thanks again for joining us.